So what was the impact of the service of black soldiers? Um, I mean, the war is going on, and it, it's hard to even know what the worst, but things are changing daily in the Civil War in terms of the old Union. Once the Emancipation Proclamation is issued, it's totally clear you can never go back to the old Union which, uh, you know, which had produced the war. This happens in big ways and in small ways. I, I, I want to read you an excerpt from a letter with the historians like to quote by the mother of a black soldier, Hannah Johnson, the mother of a soldier in the 54th Massachusetts, to Lincoln. She, she sits down and writes a letter to Lincoln. Even the fact of doing that is a sign of the radical changes taking place. What black person would have written a letter to James Buchanan or to Franklin Pierce or to any president before the Civil War. What would be the point? But she believes Lincoln is going to read this letter and respond to it in some way. So she says, I have but poor education. I never went to school, but I know just as well as any what is right between man and man. I know a colored man ought to run no greater risk than a white. Why should not our enemies be compelled to treat him the same? This is about the treatment of black soldiers by the Confederacy. Link, Mr. Lincoln, don't you think you ought to stop this thing and make them do the same by the colored men? They have lived in, this is probably the best definition of slavery around, they have lived in idleness all their lives on stolen labor. You must put the rebels to work in state prisons making shoes and things if they sell our colored soldiers. It may seem cruel, but there's no other way. Some people tell me you will take back the proclamation. Don't do it. When you are dead and in heaven a thousand years, that action of yours will make the angels sing your praises. On and on. In other words, she is instructing Lincoln about what he ought to do. Now, that's, this is a democracy. The citizens have a right to do that. Lincoln gets letters all the time from citizens telling him what to do. But now black people are also acting as if they are citizens of the United States, able to address the president directly. This is just a sign of the changes going on in the middle of the, uh, of the Civil War. Now, these black soldiers suffered very high casualties, as whites did. Of the 180,000, something like 38,000 died in the war, pretty high percentage. Um, but certainly, their service was critical in the last two years of the war and in defining what the war was, uh, what was going to produce. And the service of black soldiers, particularly in the border states, where a lot of them came from, propelled forward the process of emancipation. Because even though slavery was still legal, remember, the Emancipation Proclamation does not apply to Maryland, Kentucky, et cetera. Black soldiers who enlist from there become free. So that's the route out of slavery for men in the last two years of the war as, as the war continues. And finally, at the very end of the war, in March 1865, Congress frees the families of these black soldiers, the wives, children, um, etc. Well, wives and children, I guess, of black soldiers from the border are freed by Congress. An interesting law, because remember, the blacks did not have families in a legal sense, right? Under slavery, there was no such thing as a le they had families, but there was no legal recognition of them. Now, for the first time, Congress recognizes the reality of black family life and liberates the Families. Lincoln was very nervous about this because this was the first time that a law of Congress had liberated individual slaves who were not like fighting for the enemy or helping the enemy or something. And he, he wasn't sure whether this was totally constitutional, but he said, well, it's necessary for the army. Again, military necessity. You can't fight in the army if you're afraid your family is being abused. Your family is not, you know, is being mistreated because you're in the army. So freeing those families actually is a military measure to enhance the efficiency of the Union Army. But the main point is it is service in the army that, fund that basically destroys the institution of slavery in, um, particularly in Kentucky, 
where uh, they cling to slavery all the way through to the very, very end of the war. Serving in the army was not only you know, a political act, but psychologically, you might say, liberating for former slaves. Um, they enjoyed, you might say, demonstrating contempt for the symbols of slavery. One soldier wrote from New Orleans, he said, I walked fearlessly and boldly through the streets of a southern city without being required to take off my cap at every step or to give the sidewalks to those lordly princes of the sunny south, the planter's sons. They were frequently greeted with, by crowds of cheering for liberated slaves. Even though, as I say, the service of black soldiers was erased from the national historical memory in the early 20th century, it was never forgotten in black communities. There was an alternative memory of the Civil War that survived all the way through, long, you know, as a counter, a counter attitude to the mainstream racist view. Martin Delaney, who we'll talk about down the road, the great black abolitionist who's in South Carolina in 1865 addressing a crowd of former slaves, he says, I want to tell you one thing. If it were not for the black man, this war would never have been brought to a close with the success of the, uh, of the Union. In other words, this was what black people believed. The black soldiers had been essential to winning the war. Some of you might have possibly seen or read a book by a um, African-American uh, female writer, activist, Pauli Murray, called Proud Shoes, which is sort of an autobiography of her life in the 20th century. Proud Shoes, what does the title Proud Shoes mean? She says she was brought up to say, we walked, this is in 1920s, 30, we walked in proud shoes because her grandfather had fought in the Union Army. So this was a family, you know, the family remembered it even though the larger culture had forgotten it. 